My first question to you is, when you look at investment, you bring this very analytical mindset to the table. I mean, you decide on particular criteria and on the first few hours whether a company even passes the test. So when you think in such structured terms, does it spill into your personal life? Do you introspect about relationships, how you relate to people? Do you overanalyze situations or conversations? Well, I think people close to me have suggested and said that I have a very low emotional response to most events. Some of them wish the emotions were higher, but it's not something I can control. You know, it is the way it is. All of us are hard-coded in terms of who we are between our genetics and the first five or six years of our life experience in the first five, six years. So I became aware of this uh, when others kind of put a mirror in front of me and said, so that is definitely an advantage in business and investing. Many times it's also an advantage in life, but it ha also has its disadvantages. You know, one of the things that I learned a lot from is when I had the lunch with Buffett, I said to him, I said, Warren, you are an exceptional judge of humans. Were you always a great judge of humans? And he said to me that you're actually mistaken, Monish. I'm actually not that great at judging humans. He said, if you put me in a cocktail party with a hundred people and you gave me about five minutes to meet each person individually. And he said that I would probably be able to tell you that there were four people out of those hundred that were exceptional, wonderful people. And there were probably four people who were probably turnoffs, you know, probably the arrogance, ego and so on coming in. And the other 92, I probably wouldn't be able to form an opinion about. Then he went one step further. He said that what you ought to do is bring those four people who you were impressed with into your inner circle and the other 96, just take them out. So basically, in effect, he was being a very harsh grader. He was grading the people that he couldn't tell the same way that he was grading the people who turned him off. And that is a, a very powerful mental model to use in life. It is a very unfair model to use because to a person who is in that 92, who may be a really good person, go on to exclude, it's not fair to that person. But what happens is that by being a harsh grader, so if you take the perspective that there are an infinite number of humans on planet Earth, and if there are infinite number of humans on planet Earth, it means there's also an infinite number or near infinite number of good people on planet Earth. We don't pay a penalty for excluding a good person from our circle. We play a big penalty for including a not so good person. And so basically by being a unfair, harsh grader, you get a huge advantage in life. And Buffett also says that, you know, if you hang out with people better than you, you become better. And if you hang out with people worse than you, you become worse. So this heuristic and this mental model. So when I meet people for the first time, the filter is pretty rigorous in the sense that if I uncover anything even minor that may be a concern for me, I'll just, you know, exclude the person, right? And the people who get included have to be just, you know, in that five minutes, they just impress you so much and whatever. When I moved to Austin about or close to two years back, I get a lot of requests from people who want to meet for lunch or coffee or whatever. And usually a lot of them get discarded just from the way, you know, what I know from the request. But some of them, I said, okay, you know, let's meet some of these folks and see what's going on. I think in the last almost two years, I must have met maybe 30 or so individuals one-on-one. -on -one. Only one person became a very good friend and I like to spend time with him. And the other 29 mostly went by the wayside. There might be one or two others who are might be okay to hang out with. And it's not that they are bad people or anything. It's just that I was using Buffett's filter where even if I couldn't tell I moved with the decision to move on. It's a difficult mental model for most people because they, people want to be fair, but I think the fairness will get in the way of being the best version of yourself. So what is the trait where you see in someone, whether it's someone you meet just like this or a promoter of a company and you say, okay, I got to keep my distance. Well, I mean, I would say ego becomes one part of it. You can tell, usually you can tell if someone is low ego or high ego, how do they treat people three, four levels below them at the, at the right. bottom of the totem pole? What are their friends like? You know, what are their likes and dislikes and how they kind of make decisions or different things that they choose to spend time on. So there's a lot of tells, you know, and some of those things might be fine for the person. They may be good. They just may not be a fit for someone like me. And like I said, like, like Buffett said, many times we can't tell because people put up fronts, right? So it's not always possible in a short meeting to get past those fronts, but to the extent that you can, it can be really helpful. 